Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Sean Golden and today we're going to be talking about what tendonitis actually is and then based on that definition, how to actually treat it. So first off, what am I talking about when I say tendonitis? What, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you've had tendonitis or a condition within a tendon for at least a few weeks. So I'm not talking about a condition that's only gonna last about a week or two or else you wouldn't really be here, you wouldn't be super concerned about it. Usually when people get tendon issues, whether we're talking about tennis elbow or Achilles tendonitis or jumper's knee and the patella tendon, uh, any of these conditions, tricep tendonitis, bicipital tendonitis in the shoulder here, tons of different ways you can get tendonitis, which the, by the name it means inflammation of the tendon. But for a lot of these people, that pain never really goes away. And if it was just inflammation, the pain would go away. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about how tendonitis really isn't inflammation. It's really characterized by a change in structure uh, within the tendon itself. And when we understand what tendonitis actually is, then we can figure out what are effective ways to actually treat it. So getting into, first off, what are we talking about when we say tendonitis? Tendonitis means inflammation of the tendon. However, inflammation only lasts a few weeks. So if you've been having this tendon condition for months or possibly even years, it's not going to be characterized by inflammation anymore. There's been quite a few studies and some of the evidence is a little bit contradictory because some studies do find evidence of inflammation, but in general, the tendonitis or chronic tendinopathy is really a better word for it, uh, does not really involve, it's not characterized by inflammation. So inflammation isn't necessary to be there in order for you to feel that pain. Most people are confused by this because the general advice they get from their doctor is to rest the area, maybe apply ice to it, take some NSAIDs, and you should be good to go. But if you're watching this video, I know that you've probably tried those strategies and it's still continuing. And so we're really past the inflammatory stage. So when, we're, when we get past the inflammatory stage and it doesn't get better with rest, what that means is there's been a change in the structure of the tendon itself. So the tendon is supposed to have these nice parallel fibers where they're all kind of going aligned, minimal scar tissue, minimal fibrotic tissue. They should be very functional. Uh, they should be elastic, able to hold force and stretch under load. Those are all properties that a normal tendon should have. And we have, when we have a chronic tendon condition, I'll just use tennis elbow as, a, as an example. If you have pain in this, in this tennis elbow region where the tendon is, and you've been having that for a long time, what that means is that if you were to take a biopsy and actually look under there uh, to see what the tendon looked like under a microscope, you would see that the parallel, the fibers aren't really parallel anymore, that they're kind of going all different directions or kind of get tangled up. Uh, you would see that there's some scar tissue, there's some fibrotic tissue there, and that there would be more disorganized structure in general. If you were to try to place that tendon under load, you would find it's actually weaker and it's not as strong as a normal healthy tendon should be. And so that makes it more fragile and actually more susceptible to re-injury. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, I'm gonna show you a picture. This is of a, of a rat's tendon. It's the exact same thing that occurs when humans, the only reason I'm using this picture is because humans don't want you to go around and biopsy their muscles and tendons all the time. So it's much easier to find examples of rat's tissue under chronic tendinopathy. Uh, uh, tendinosis conditions. Um, so let's show that now. Alright guys, so on the image to the left here, you can see this is a normal healthy rat's tendon. And you can see that it has pretty well aligned structural tissue. The fibers are pretty much going the same direction. Uh, minimal scar tissue, minimal fibrotic tissue, not a whole lot of pathological findings. Now, on the picture to the right here, we can see definitely disorganized structure. The fibers are going all different directions. There is more white in the image, which is more fibrotic tissue, more scar tissue that's been laid down. And in general, this tendon is going to be way weaker because it's not well organized. So the fibers are not all pulling uh, the force in the same direction. So it's going to be more susceptible to injury. So the tendon on the left would be able to withstand a much higher load before failure, before injury, than the tendon on the right. 
All right guys, now that we've been able to see what a normal healthy tenant should look like and what a pathological tenant should look like or one that has this chronic tendinopathy, uh, now the last question we need to ask ourselves is, well if there's not really inflammation present in the tendon, then where's the pain coming from? I mean, in a lot of cases it seems like NSAIDs can actually reduce the pain, uh, but if there's no inflammation present in a lot of the tendons that have this pain for years and years on end, then where's it coming from? It turns out that the most recent research is showing that you're getting what's called neurovascular ingrowth into the tendon and that might be the primary source of pain. And that's our current best hypothesis. So what I mean by this is we have this normal tendon here, so pretend my arm right here is the tendon. We have this sheath, so it's a type of fascia that surrounds, it's a peritendinous sheath that surrounds the tendon. So that tendon itself should not be innervated with pain fibers that get activated with stretch. What I mean by that is if we were to tug on this tendon, it shouldn't cause pain because if that was the case, then every time I took a step, I should have pain in my Achilles tendon, which I don't have. So when we stretch the tendon itself, there shouldn't be any pain. However, it turns out the peritendin in the sheath that surrounds it, the fascia that surrounds the tendon, is highly innervated with pain fibers. And what we now know is that the pain fibers, when the, when the tendon has undergone degenerative changes for long enough, we can get neurovascular or neural ingrowth into the tendon itself. And now when that tendon is tugged on, it lights up the nerves and causes pain. What happens is that means that every step you take when you have Achilles tendonitis, you feel pain. And it doesn't mean that you, like you have to run two miles before you start feeling pain. You'll feel pain at that first step because the, the nerves are actually growing into the tendon and they're getting activated at, but with every time you stretch that tendon, every time you take a step. So that's kind of the last component. The good news um, about the neurovascular ingrowth into the tendon is really that it definitely seems like it can be reversed. Which makes sense because tendinopathy conditions do get better. They can get better with proper treatment. And if that was the case, then we would have to have those nerves get out of there. At this point in time, there's not enough research to say whether those nerves are actually growing back out or retracting back to the peritendinous sheath, or if through the exercise, through the rehab training, that it's actually just clamping off the nerves and they're kind of uh, just deteriorating and breaking off from the fascia above it. So we don't know the answer to that one yet. Um, either way, it doesn't really matter. We know that with proper rehab, this can get better. So to end this video, really the main point I wanted to get across when shooting this video was to have you understand that the tendonitis is not an inflammatory condition if you've had it for a long time. Really, because it's not tendonitis anymore. It's now tendinosis or chronic tendinopathy, whatever you want to call it, but it's characterized by degenerative changes and a change in structure. Um, another, way, another good way to think about it that I forgot to mention earlier was it's kind of like when you get a scar on your skin. You know, if you, if, you get a, if you pick off a little bit of skin and you get a scab and then a scar, the scar isn't going to be fully functional tissue. It might not have hair follicles, it doesn't stretch as easily. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a, it can be a little bit more deformed than the regular skin. And that's kind of how the scar tissue looks like in the tendon too. And it'll just stay there. It'll just stay there for months or years on end. Uh, tons of times runners have, have gotten, let's say, patellar tendonitis in the knee. And they've stopped running for two to three months. And then the first day they go back to running, they feel the pain again. And really that's because the, they, they didn't do anything to change that structure. It's still there from how it was a few months ago. So that's a really important concept to get across when trying to work with tendon conditions or tendinopathy or any type of tendon pain. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up, make sure you subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them below the video here. I will respond to each of them. I want to answer all of your questions. Um, I also have a download for you below and what it is is it's a deep dive into actually how to treat your own tenant conditions at home. 
So it's it's deeper than I really go into on, on these videos, although I'll, I'll have, I have more videos on the topic. But the PDF download you can get for free. Uh, just click the link below in the description here and you can, you can get access to that for free right here. Uh, so now that we know exactly what tendonitis really is, the next thing we want to do is we want to know how to treat it. But before I share with you guys how to actually treat it, a really good video for you to watch is actually the most common mistakes that people make when they have tendonitis, the mistakes that they make. So I made a video with the top six mistakes that people make with tendonitis. It's also in the description below. Um, it's, on, it's also on my channel if you go to the channel. Make sure you watch that video because if you're suffering with a chronic tendon conditions, you wanna make sure you're not making these mistakes. Also after that video, you're gonna to wanna to watch the video I have where, you, where I actually teach you how to treat these tendon conditions yourself at home. But you're not gonna to wanna to watch that video before you watch the mistakes video because if, you, or if you're making these mistakes and you're trying to treat this, that's like taking one step forward and then two steps back. So you're gonna to wanna to watch the mistakes video first. All right guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all again soon.